Today we're going to talk about the pelvis and the hip and orthopedic views and trauma views. Um, this is just your pelvis review, the anatomy, um, the positioning, just general pelvis views that you have been doing for some time. So that's what that's about. And here is the a frog view and also the hip anatomy on a, a regular x-ray. This is your hip bone. It's made up of three bones that fuse into one. And you can see them uh, pretty well on uh, children's pelvis views. They're still separated. They haven't grown together yet and formed the acetabulum completely. So you have the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. And this is all your anatomy. You need to know all of this. And here are some of the um, other distinguishing areas of the, uh, pel the hip bone, all related to the acetabulum. In the anterior portion, you have the iliopubic column. And in the posterior portion, you have the ischi ilioischial column. So it's where the ischium and the ilium um, posteriorly fuse. And in the front is the iliopubic bone column where the ilium and the pubic bone fuse. And here's a, here's a child. Um, you can see where they're not quite fused here yet, not quite fused here yet. So um, that's how the bones come together at the acetabulum. Patient prep, um, you're gonna shield all your patients. Using the shield, uh, like the fig leaf shield on patients is really, really tricky and um, Jeff is really good at it. So um, practice it in lab so that you're gonna be able to use it comfortably. Otherwise, it, you're gonna have a lot of repeats because you're gonna get that shield in the anatomy. So you wanna be sure you practice it. Uh, no, everything waist down off. Um, you can leave the underwear on unless it's got metal or buttons or snaps or whatever. No belly button rings. If it's a trauma, you, you're limited, of course, but you do your best. You're not going to move your patients a whole lot. Um, you need to really know your anatomy and how it lies within the body so that you can get the um, images that the radiologists need. Because if you don't know what, what the anatomy is inside and all the angles and how it lies in there, you're not going to get the parts in the position they need to be in for the radiologist to evaluate well. These two doctors are um, very well known in orthopedics for their work um, uh, in surgery and for treatment of, of traumas, uh, particularly in the acetabulum in the pelvis. They actually wrote the book on acetabular fractures and how to image them effectively. The fractures of the acetabulum from traumas are typically very co complicated and these doctors are recognized experts on how these fractures of the pelvis are managed and imaged and repaired. So you'll have um, the Jude views of the acetabulum that we're going to look at today. These are the lines that Jude and Letourneau uh, look at where there may possibly be fractures. So you can see the um, posterior wall of the acetabulum here and the anterior wall of the acetabulum here and the dome or the, the, the top, it's called the roof dome or tectum of the acetabulum. So it's the top part. The teardrop is something that you sometimes you can see and discern and sometimes you can't. It's very I found it very difficult to find on a lot of images, but sometimes you'll see them pretty well and sometimes you won't. And it's basically um, here in this area of the acetabulum. 
I think it maybe see it better here. But this is the part that you're seeing when in an um, anterior view. Um, that part of the um, acetabular fossa where the teardrop shows. So if you're looking anteriorly and you see that little teardrop shape there, it's basically that part of the acetabulum that I just showed you. And the um, ilioischial line, the posterior column, we just talked about that, and the iliopectineal line, which goes up from the brim of the um, top of the pelvis on the ilium down to the brim of the pubic bone anteriorly. These are the Jude views of the acetabulum. So this, in this picture, they're looking at the right hip. So the patient is in an LPO position, and they typically will do both oblique views of the same hip for an internal and external rotation of the acetabulum in the um, head of the femur. So the LPO places the right hip in an internal oblique position, and the RPO puts the right hip in an external oblique position. And you can see from the um, pictures up here what that's going to show and how that's going to work. There's also modified views of the Jude. So the anterior projection uh, for the internal oblique is just is obtained on a trauma patient in the same position using a vertical CR. So it's just like the other view. Um, the LPO looking at the right hip for an internal oblique. And then the other method is not moving the patient but doing a cross table from the other orthogonal view. The 90 degrees from the internal oblique is going to show you the external oblique as if the patient had rolled onto their right side. But if the patient can't really move, then they're doing it in a cross table manner for the external oblique. These are what your images are going to look like. Um, LPO, internal oblique. RPO, external oblique. So I want you to look at the um, obturator foramen here and see the difference so that if you look at this image, you can determine which oblique view this is. Check out your markers so you know which side you're looking at. And look at your obturator foramen and the ischium down below and see exactly where you're aligning, where that is opened or closed and which oblique view that you're doing. You need to be able to recognize that when you're looking at your images. Here is your cross table lateral hip and you guys have been doing this for some time now so as you've seen it's sometimes difficult to get good detail in the acetabulum. So what I suggest is I'm, I challenge you to find the, the tech in your department who is cons had, consistently has the best cross table lateral hips and learn the best practice from them because if you learn their best practice you're going to have no problem doing these at any time. Um, as the book says, also, just be aware, you can see here, they've got the patient's foot on the collimator box. The box says, don't do that ever. So put the patient's foot opposite leg that's up out of the way. Put it on a sponge or something to keep it up because um, the collimator box actually gets really hot and it can burn them. So you just need to find another way. Be creative. This is a modified view of the um, cross table lateral hip. If the patient has, for example, both hips are fractured or they just had surgery on both hips or for whatever reason they're unable to move the opposite leg out of the way, then you will do this view, which is a 15 degree posterior angulation of the CR. Um, toward the slightly angled gridded IR moving slightly under the patient. So you've put the cassette slightly or the image receptor slightly underneath the patient. You need to be sure that your 
image receptor and your collimator box are still parallel with each other, but you're just going to angle down slightly toward the patient's hip um, to make sure that you can see the hip joint free of superimposition of the other anatomy in the area. So um, you don't rotate the leg at all, you just leave it in a neutral position and then you have them hold their breath for this image. And I did see this at the VA recently, um, one of the first year students did and it was really a, a really great uh, image. It was very well done. And here's your anatomy of your inlet and outlet of the pelvis. Um, these are great representations, so I want you to really look at these so it helps you to understand what you're talking about with inlet and outlet. And these are the inlet and outlet views. So for the outlet projection, um, depending if you're doing a male or a female, you're going to center um, at two inches inferior to the superior border of the pubic symphysis. And depending if it's male or female, you'll, you'll do anywhere from, for males, 20 to 35 degrees to cephalate angle, or for females, 30 to 45 degrees cephalate angle. The, um, Jocelyn and Jeff are going to ask you um, on your practical, they're going to expect you to know which is which when you do your angles for inlet and outlet projections. Um, so be sure that you understand that you're doing that and why. Um, also, one of the things that people fail to do when they're doing these um, more steep angled images is move the bucky and center the image receptor to your central ray and your crosshairs because you will miss if your bucky is underneath the patient um, and not lined up. So be sure you line up your bucky once you get your angle situated where you want it line up the bucky, and then move the tabletop to move the patient around and get them positioned properly. So it really helps to do that first before you start trying to figure out where you want the patient. You need to include the entire pelvis, and um, you should see um, the pubic and ischial bones magnified with um, pubic bones superimposed over the sacrum and coccyx, symmetric obturator foramen, foramina and um, the pubic and ischial rami near the center of the radiograph and you'll see your hip joints as well. Here's what the image looks like. So you can see ischial tuberosities down here. You can see the difference between what a female would look like and what the male would look like. So you're centered where from the superior edge of the pubic bone? All right, and here is your inlet view, which is the opposite. So you're looking at the um, anterior brim of the pelvis here for this one. All of these are 40 inches, and for this one, you're going to center midline at about the ASIS. So you include both hips, the, the edge of the um, pubic bone, and the top of the brim. Uh, superiorly here. Always 40 degrees, male, female, it's always 40 degrees. And once again, you can see on this image, the bucky is not lined up. So you need to be sure you move your bucky and get it lined up properly. And here are some pr uh, fractures, pelvic tra traumatic pelvic fractures. Here's the inlet view, and you can see the fracture up here. And the, um, boy, this whole thing is unstable and separated and you also have this is the acetabular fractures and repairs I went to this website and it had some really amazing pictures in there and it's kinda of hard to tell from the the images these are just um, screws and um, framework to hold all the bones in place it's really amazing to see them these are some of the classic classifications of the acetabular fractures by Jude and Letourneau. And this is an image showing stabilization of after trauma and post-surgical repair. So this was the injury, this was um, stabilizing it, and then this was the repair afterward. 
And just remember when you're working in trauma, you have to think critically and, and have the base knowledge to understand what you're looking at to become an excellent technologist. Talk to you guys.